This Equipment World video is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. Hey, what's going on guys? Wayne here. You're watching Equipment World. Welcome into another episode of The Dirt, the video podcast that brings you interviews and discussions around the latest in construction equipment and what's going on in the construction industry in general. Coming up today on The Dirt, we're going to be talking about the latest wheel loaders from Doosan, specifically the new Dash 7 Next Generation wheel loaders. Now, to do that, we're going to be joined today by two guests, and that is Aaron Kleingartner and Bill Zach of Doosan. Now, Aaron is a product and dealer marketer marketing manager at Doosan, and Bill is a wheel loader product specialist. Now, Aaron and Bill are going to take us through everything new on these new Dash 7 loaders. There's about 12 new models, seven of which are going to be released in the U.S. this year. There's also a new nifty kind of technology feature that they're releasing around the bucket of the machine that's definitely worth some discussion, but these machines also have a completely new exterior design and a completely redesigned cab. Like I said, there's a lot to get into with these machines. This is a pretty beefy episode, so so let's get into it. Well, hey, Aaron, Bill, guys, thank you so much for, for joining us today on this episode of The Dirt to talk about Doosan's latest wheel loaders in this new Dash 7 generation lineup. How are you guys doing today? We're doing well, Wayne. Thanks for having us. Doing great. Thanks, Wayne. Awesome. Well, it's good. Good to hear. Good to see you guys. Um, Aaron, uh, before we started taping, we actually <laughs> were talking about it's been about 14 months since uh, since we've seen each other's face. So definitely good to see you guys. Bill, this is actually our first time talking, but uh, I can I can already tell uh, you're you're a good dude. And so I'm, I'm happy to talk about happy to talk about some wheel loaders today. Uh, so it, it might depend on who you ask on that one. But thanks. <laughs> no problem. Well, so, hey, um, you know, before we get into the specifics on on these new Dash 7 loaders, um, you know, I, I did want to talk a little bit about the wheel loader market kind of in general and get get some insight in, into that space uh, from you guys. So, you know, kind of talk a little bit about from you guys perspective, how competitive that that market is right now. We're seeing we're seeing a lot of, um, you know, some of the automation features finally kind of trickle down into the wheel loaders, whether it be, you know, help with digging and dumping and, and stuff like that. But we're also seeing a lot of advances in new cabs where we're, uh, wheel loaders are finally starting to get some of that love uh, on, on the design front and the innovation front. And you guys have a really cool innovation that we're going to get into um, in a little bit here. But yeah, talk about that wheel loader space, um, how, how you guys think it has changed, you know, over the last 10 years or so. So the wheel loader market has grown over the last number of years. Um, obviously, the last few months have thrown a wrench in everybody's trend analysis and all that, and it'll probably mess people up for years trying to figure things out for for uh, trend work and all that. But uh, the the market has has grown. There's a number of wheel loader features and functions that have been introduced in the last few years in the marketplace that have made the, the product uh, really awesome for more productivity, um, having the ability to really do more with, uh, with a wheel order. Um, a lot of times the smaller end of the range is, is looked at a little more versatile with uh, different attachments you can put on the machine. You know, a wheel order isn't just a bucket uh, or a scoop on the front end of a, a tractor anymore. So those advancements over the last 10 years have really grown to some niche markets where operators are using machines very spe specifically. And then more the general contractors using them for everyday work around a job site, moving materials. So there's a wide range of applications for the machines. And we're excited to roll out our, our new Dash 7 series machines over the next few months and get them in the hand, hands of customers and operators. And if I just kind of expand on that, you know, over the last 10 years. So I've been with Doosan coming up on four years now with, with wheel loaders for that long. I with some, some with some other products before that, but I kind of take a look at it as you go going 10 years back. We're not really asking a wheel loader to do anything different today than we did 10 years ago. Same, same basic functions. You know, like Aaron said, we're getting into some you know, niche markets, some different markets, but uh, you know, I, I see it as, you know, we're, we're kind of evolving around, technology and an operator comfort on it. Uh, I could try to explain this, you know, some of the people around the office that, you know, we all sit in the office you know, we have a nice ergonomic keypad, nice ergonomic mouse, a chair with lumbar support. And at the end of the day, sometimes people don't realize that that operator sits up in that machine 
being bounced around for 10, 12, 14 hours a day. So just making things so comfortable for that operator up in the cab is where I see like a lot of the changes happening and you know, where we're going in the last 10 years, it's, it's their, it's their office is what it is. And the more we understand that, the more we can throw some ergonomic comforts into that. Yeah. I mean, and, um, yeah, and before we get into this, uh, to some of those things, you know, Aaron, you mentioned on kind of the smaller end of, of those line. I'll, 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 I'll throw this one back to, to both of you, um, that there's, there's, there tends to be kind of more attention on maybe the smaller end of, uh, uh, of the lineup due to kind of maybe some of the, some of the versatility. Um, and that kind of, uh, there, there's, there's quite a lot of bit of that going on right now in the industry in general, uh, in, in terms of the interest and kind of, um, activity around compact all compact machines because of those attachments because of that versatility um, is, is that something that you guys have seen maybe in the last five to ten years kind of you know uh, are more and more guys out there uh, using some of those smaller uh, wheel loaders and using more of those attachments maybe than they did in the past um, I, I know Bill you mentioned that really the, the core functionality the loader really hasn't changed here in the last decade but it, that that kind of uh, you know compact machine with a ton of tools it it does seem to really be kind of permeating through just about every part of the market, but maybe the one of the ones you hear about at least with would, would be the wheel loader, unless it's like a, you know, a, a, a niche machine, like a, an, like a Vaunt or, or something of, of that type. But yeah, talk, talk a little bit about that guys. What have you seen in that space that, that, that this is kind of off topic, but uh, it's interesting nonetheless, that compact space or the, the increased use of uh, more and more tools that are in a bucket. From our smaller end of our wheel orders, you know, we talk a, a little bit about versatility. A lot of times those machines are configured with a quick coupler so they can change, you know, non-hydraulic attachments from the seat of the cab, again, making it easier for the operator, uh, changing tools throughout the day. Uh, but as Bill mentioned, you know, a wheel loader is doing a lot of the same tasks it's done, you know, forever. The, the operator isn't asking it to do a lot uh, different today than it was a number of years ago. But I think one of the things that we find is that everybody wants to do more with their machine. And so oftentimes that makes a jump from a compact loader into a true articulated wheel loader. You need that additional stability. You need that additional lift capacity for the job at hand. And that, you know, jump up to that larger machine, albeit a smaller end of what we call a true articulated wheel loader, is uh, something that you know many contractors are doing to get that improved productivity, um, better visibility, you sit higher with the machine. And so there's a number of advantages of a uh, articulated wheel or concept compared to what would be considered a true compact uh, product. Well, guys, um, uh, you, you know, we, we mentioned up at the top, uh, you know, the, the last 10 years or so. Speaking of, of, of a 10 year time period, you know, uh, until these Dash 7, you know, loaders uh, were, were announced, it, it had been about that long, about 10 years since Doosan had made a major shift uh, in its loader design, had had, you know, made that, you know, a new generational leap. So, you know, what are the key improvements in you guys' minds on, on these new loaders? Um, and, you know, or what do you guys feel, you know, were the areas on, on those those previous generation Dash 5 machines that, that needed addressing the most, I guess, with the rest of the market in mind, you know, over the last few years, seeing some of what else uh, had come out and hit the market? You know, what do you guys really feel are the key improvements? What are the things that really needed the addressing the most from the from the Doosan side of things in these news loaders that that that? these new loaders deliver. But before we get into that, I do want to take a quick second right here to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Chevron Lubricants. Look, protecting your diesel engine and its exhaust after treatment system, that has traditionally been seen as really an either or proposition when it comes to choosing the engine oil that's going to protect your system. And that's exactly why Chevron spent a decade of R&D work developing a no compromise formulation. Now, I don't have to tell you why a clogged DPF is bad news, but here's the real kick in the pants. Nine percent of that ash clogging up your DPF and then upping your fuel and maintenance costs, it comes from your engine oil. And you might be thinking, uh, gee, why don't they make an engine oil with less ash in it then? You'll be happy to hear that Chevron agrees with you. They've developed a new ultra low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Delo 600 ADF with Omnimax technology cuts sulfate ash by 60%, radically reducing the rate of DPF 
DPF clogging and extending DPF service life by two and a half times. Before, you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system. Now, you don't. Delo 600 ADF with Omnimax technology. It's time to kick some ash. Well, first part of the question is, you know, 10 years since, since a major change or a model change, uh, you know, ro rolling all along. So again, I've been with Doosan coming up on four years. And as I kind of look at the history, you know, we had a, a DL, we had a dash three model, uh, we have a dash five model. Now we have a dash seven. So al although there wasn't a major change within, uh, if you want to say design, uh, there's always a lot of rolling changes going forth. You know, for instance, we're getting into the DL uh, dash three models. We have dash five models. And although on the outside, you didn't see really significant changes underneath, uh, there, there was some big changes actually. So from the dash three to dash five, you know, you may have seen a DL 300 dash five, then we had a dash five K. Uh, so the, the K would indicate a significant change within the machine. So we went from, from a, uh, a particular machine, we may have gone from a Scania engine to a Doosan engine. So that, that's a pretty significant change there. Um, so, but getting in the dash sevens, you know, now you really see the physical changes, you know, with the aesthetics of the machine, the styling of the machine. Uh, so kind of looking at that, that's where the, the big changes really come in. You kind of look at that and then, you know, kind of addressing another part of the question, where were, were we, where we are now, you know, why, what changes did we see? So all, all along our machines have been competitive with anybody out there. Uh, we, we do our, you know, independent testing we bring in operators we go out to our test facility out in arizona we call it the rock uh, we do competitive testing and all along i mean we we've we're competitive you know there's we we beat you know specs in some categories with competitors we're even you know we're, we're right there everybody's got a good widget out there so kind of looking at that but you know taking a look at then the technology standpoint that's where we're really moving up uh not, not only getting up with the competition, but excelling on the competition. So for instance, we had some switches, buttons, you know, I, want, I don't want to say scattered throughout the cab, but at different locations within the cab, we've now taken them over on the right-hand console, placed them all in a very convenient location, you know, right arm reach, very easy to reach, as well as it, with, with all the different buttons on there, there's a lot of ISO symbols. If you get an experienced operator in there, more than likely they know what all those ISO symbols are, but they're still going to look at some of them and go, well, I don't really understand what this function is. So as what we've done there. So on that electronic switch panel now, we've got an information button. So if you press on that information button, every button on that uh, keypad will light up. And then we've got a eight inch uh, LCD color monitor. So while all those keys are lit up, I can press on the key I have question on, and it'll tell me, hey, what that function does. It'll give me a description. So now I can take an inexperienced operator, put them in there, and they can effectively use the tools that are on the machine. All right. And, um, you know, uh, guys, following up on that last question a little bit, we mentioned the the kind of the 10 year gap between, you know, proper generations, um, you know, and, and I, I tend to add, you know, everyone, every company has uh, different reasons for, you know, either adding, you know, a letter like you mentioned, uh, Bill, the K, um, you know, onto the to the dash five machines. Um, uh, you know, everyone has their own reasons or their own kind of, uh, I guess, um, requirements as to what what is a what you know a gener a proper generational leap like this is not a dash five machine anymore this is a this is a true dash seven so um yeah like why um why the 10 years in between i guess proper generations um what are kind of some of the requirements that you guys feel are important if you're going to change over a whole generation from dash five to dash seven um you know what's going on with these new machines that really kind of hit that hit that spot in terms of this is definitely a, a new generation um and uh, what has all what has kind of gone into that to that 10 year period of really kind of uh, uh developing these new dash seven machines what went into you know what informed a lot of these changes obviously customer input is going to be a big one but yeah give us a little bit of idea about the development time behind these machines so again, you know, short time with Tucson here, but so I look at my job as, you know, we to as a product manager, bring new product to market and I can sit back in my office and think I have these great ideas, but at the end of the day, it, it revolves around the, the guys that are actually oper operating the machinery. 
So whenever we do our customer events, dealer events uh, out at the rock, or if I'll travel to different dealers, voice of customer, it's the key. So, you know, kind of taking a look at that and it, it goes way back even before I started with Doosan that this project had started and, you know, my predecessors all, you know, feeding back voice of customer to you know, Korea and so forth to the manufacturer uh, that that's, it's all key around what the customers are telling us. So, you know, just getting their feedback input from them, feeding it back to the factory. And then, you know, then from there, feed, they feed it to their engineers and, you know, come up with the new product. So, but at the end of the day, our customers dictate, you know, where our product goes. Over the last 10 years, Wayne, there's been such a great focus on emission upgrades. Um, tier three to interim tier four, and then to, to final tier four. And so, you know, we as a manufacturer and, and our other OEM partners out there have been, you know, spending a lot of time and effort to make sure that we're meeting those regulations, but still providing added value to the customer as those, those technologies are upgraded to improve uh, emissions uh, with the machine. And so, our jump to the Dash 7, you know, next gen series machines has been a, a significant upgrade for us in the fact that this isn't necessarily tied to that emissions upgrade. You know, Bill mentioned our Dash 3 to Dash 5 were tied to emissions. And we, like I said, added additional features and functions at those times to make the, the machines you know, easier to operate or more productive. But this generational change is indicated in a body style. But as Bill has mentioned, the body style doesn't really do it justice. You know, you got to take a look at what improvements are made to productivity, what improvements are made to the operator comfort. And those are the areas that we, we really focused on taking that feedback that we get with, with that voice of customer activity that we do. And you know, we'll go out and visit a customer, ask them what they like, what they don't like. And, you know, we really care what they don't like. Like, that's what we want to hear because that's what makes us better. Um, if they just told us, yep, thumbs up, great machine, we love it, um, that, that doesn't help. And so, you know, we're, we're seeking out that input. We're seeking out that advice all the time. Um, and, you know, the, the cycle never ends, right? We're always looking at the next best uh, thing, the new widget that's going to make, uh, make everybody happy in the marketplace. And that's a, that's a great transition because before I, before we got too far in here, I, I, you know, I mentioned at the top of, 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 of our discussion here, um, the fact that you guys had, had, uh, introduced a, a pretty impressive, uh, new kind of innovation of your own, definitely a differentiating feature here, a uh, pretty smart one too. And that is, uh, the, the new transparent, uh, bucket now, um, you know, that, that, that actually, uh, got announced, uh, before, you know, it kind of came out before really like the proper announcement of these new Dash 7 loaders. I know that it's um, it's already kind of in use uh, in Doosan's home country of, of, of South Korea, but it is coming uh, to these loaders here in the U.S. But but tell us about, you know, why why is it a transparent bucket? What exactly does that mean? How that system works and, and, and when we can expect to see that feature um, on these Dash 7 loaders here in the United States? We, we just reached out to Star Trek and we imported their cloaking devices. So... <laughs> So a tra tra transparent bucket. So the, the bucket itself is obviously not transparent, but is what we do is we take uh, some camera technology. So we'll place a camera high in the machine, a camera low in the machine. And depending on the bucket, if the bucket's low, low camera is not going to be able to see through the bucket, obviously, but you'll have the high camera. So the view from the high camera and low camera will talk to a uh, video controller and it'll, one will compensate for the other. Uh, so when that bucket is up in your eye level, you're able to see through one of the cameras will project what's beyond the bucket. So for instance, you know, if I'm sitting there with the bucket on the ground, sitting in the seat, I, I obviously can see beyond the bucket. So as I raise the bucket, it gets up into my vision and I can no longer see past the bucket. So then at, at that, the bottom camera and top camera will be able to both see beyond the bucket and it will up on the video screen, it'll put the image of what's beyond that bucket. So last time we did some training out at our facility, we had a big old uh, tour bus parked out there. I parked the machine right in front of the tour bus. 
raised the bucket up till I could no longer see that tour bus. And it was only 30 feet in front of me. And if I looked on my display monitor, I could see that tour bus plain as day right, th right through the bucket. So really, really cool technology with that. So in, in essence, with that, you know, we, we look at the safety factor on it, you know, obviously increased safety with that, as well as, you know, you don't have the operator, you know, worrying about what's in front of that. You know, if you got people in the area, whatever else, you know, other equipment moving around, they'll be able to see beyond that. So as we have spoken to customers, nobody raised their hand and said, we need a transparent bucket. But what they did say is, you know, we'd like to have better visibility, you know, to our workspace and to where we're working. And, you know, people much smarter than me said, you know, let's figure this out. And they came up with this, this concept of this transparent bucket using new technology and a new way to look at things. And we're really excited about uh, bringing it to our customers in, uh, in the next uh, few months. You know, Aaron said in the next few months, so... Uh, right now they're just putting the final touches on that system, you know, um, uh, making some guarding for it to protect the cameras and so forth. And it will be available, uh, on our, as an option on our July production. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, I, Aaron, you, you kind of touched on this in, in your answer, but I, I'd, I'd like to, to kind of hear a little bit more from you guys. You, you mentioned that, you know, obviously this was a feature that wasn't necessarily, uh, specifically requested, uh, Hey, we, we, we need a little bit more, uh, sight into what, what's, you know, beyond that bucket. But, um, you know, I, you, you mentioned that some of the customers were, were, were asking for, for better visibility. I would imagine that means, you know, obviously front visibility. Um, I know some work has also been done over the years, just about everywhere to kind of improve that visibility to, to the rear. And you guys have a standard rear view camera on this thing as well, but you guys are really, you kind of took that concept. You thought about, you know, uh, the engineers were like, well, you know, we're using a camera to see behind. Why not? Why not? You know, employ some cameras to see in front. Is that kind of the general uh, kind of uh, how this thing how this thing got started? Um, and, uh, you know, what specifically were customers saying or what specific issues were they having, you know, with the traditional kind of setup of, of not being able to see what's beyond that bucket? What were some of the situations they were finding themselves in that hopefully, you know, this new system uh, solves for them? I guess taking it back to, to concept on it, uh, I believe we had some some of our senior executives attend the Consumer Electronics Show, and that was that type of technology was displayed there, and they saw that and they took that back to engineering back in Korea and said, you know what, we're going to have this. So it's something that it got implemented very quickly, and uh, you know it's, we're moving forward with it. Some of the feedback we've received from from operators and fleet managers is. You know, the the work is always in front of a, a front loader, right? The, that's a kind of a street term for, for this machine. And having the ability to see there is, is paramount to make sure that you're productive on the job site. And, you know, a transparent bucket technology using some new innovative ways to, to look at things is, is fantastic. But we've also made some other improvements to our machine to help improve visibility. Um, outside the, the front glass, the glass is larger now by almost 14% in the machine. So there's more view to the work area um, down in front by the tires and into the front area of the machine. So there's better visibility there. On the left side where the door is, there's more glass area in the door to provide better visibility out the sides of the machine. And then as you mentioned, Wayne, we've got a standard rear view camera that you know, is active on the, the monitor to the to the view of the operator at all times. And so they can change that, whether it's just a view of the monitor, uh, a view of a split screen with other information about the machine. Um, and it's very easy to flip back and forth with our new eight inch touch screen. So um, there's a lot of other things that were put into, you know, visibility on the machines. Specific to the transparent bucket, it's, it's probably got some really good act, uh, activity in certain applications where you're, you know, loading uh, a lot of trucks or loading hoppers a lot where maybe you're coming up on a stockpile and, and dumping into to something that's maybe a little bit out of your vision and that transparent bucket view, you know, really provides that composite uh, view so you can have a, a better, you know, placement of materials. Um, better, uh, you know, faster work with the machine. So there's a lot of uh, upside to providing the operator a, a better view from within the cab. 
Um, is there, is there any kind of like uh, what you see with the, the, the technology that this reminds me of the most is, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, GM came out with basically the transparent trailer, um, which was also kind of stitching together. I think there's like 14 cameras on their pickups, their heavy duty pickups, um, that kind of give you, allow you to kind of see the traffic behind you. And what they have kind of done is, is they have, you know, kind of put in some of their, um, you know, backup technology and stuff like that. Is there, are there any kind of on, on this system, which is looking forward, are there, like you mentioned the, 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 you know, obviously the kind of applications that this makes the most sense for would be load and carry, uh, so that, you know, you got to have that bucket up while you're carrying, you know, your view is obstructed. So you're able to see through it now to kind of, you know, on the approach or just kind of navigating the job site. Do you guys have any kind of, I didn't see this anywhere else, but did you guys have, do you guys have any kind of, uh, proximity sensors or any kind of uh, anything like that, like you would be used to kind of when you're backing up on the rear camera. Uh, do you have anything like that on this front camera? Is that something that you guys have, have, have thought about to, you know, you mentioned kind of approaching the truck. Are there any kind of proximity alarms that kind of, uh, you know, maybe for new operators can kind of keep them in a, in a correct zone or anything like that? No, not, not at the moment. Um, I'm not aware of anything. So no, no proximity switches or, or sensors or anything like that. <clears throat> We, we do partner with some outside places that we, we can add this kind of technology to it. But from Doosan, uh, no, we don't. Uh, if they're working on something that I'm not aware of it at this point. But before we kind of get into kind of any of the, the further technical information, I did. We, we had touched on this at the top, but we're, we were talking about the, the new design, the new look of these loaders. Um, and, I, and I understand that the exterior design has actually won a few awards in, in Europe and South Korea. So take us through the, the new look of these loaders. They are drastically different looking uh, from those previous generation Dash 5 machines. But, you know, what exactly should we know about this new exterior design I, you know as, as one of the things we, we do you know we've, we've had some uh training events already out, out at the rock and we'll park our dash five machine next to the dash seven machine and right away as you walk up you see the, the big difference uh you know outside the styling aesthetics on it uh you know new sheet metal looks good you know aaron mentioned that at the end of the day though that's not you know what produce ma- makes productivity but uh from the styling aspect of it uh, kind of, if you look uh, from, from the, I guess, starting at the back of the machine, uh, the rear, the rear grills, access panels, uh, they've changed, continued ease of access into the engine compartment, cooling compartment. So, and then looking at, uh, I guess, uh, kind of approaching, so working from the back forward, you know, again, the, the access panels, the styling on all that, uh, new decals and so forth. Uh, the rear view camera is now integrated into the rear grill as opposed to mounted in a protective structure above. Uh, kind of working our way forward, we look at the cab itself. Uh, we've got a nice cab roof on that now, uh, nice styling, cabin handrails as an option. Uh, again, the visibility out, which Aaron has discussed, uh, you know, all that. You know, working forward, uh, you know, the color scheme, just well-matched color scheme on it as well. In the exterior design, I think it's just about showcasing, you know, something new uh, to to go along with some of those new innovative features that are, you know, hidden within the, the guts of the machine, if, if you will, for lack of a better term. Um, you know, the outside, you know, looks, you know, sleek and looks new and upgraded. But at the end of the day, there's also some form and function built into those those new looks. Um, you know, the, Bill mentioned the, the grill and the panels. Um, they swing wide for easy access for serviceability. And the design of those panels help to make sure that they fit in and around um, the components underneath uh, very well and protect them at the same time. Uh, so there's, there's a, a, a form factor to it that also improves the ability to protect components, uh, improving durability and ter- improving reliability with the machine as well. So the, the look is, is awesome. It's, it's new. Uh, it does have some, some ac- action with, with the ability to protect the machine, um, but the insides of the machine are what's important. The, the hydraulics, the engine, the transmission, what make the machine productive. Uh, and we've got some great upgrades there as well. 
Uh, and you mentioned earlier, you know, the, the new cab design, um, uh, 14% more glass in this new cab design. It's got that new, uh, that new glass door, uh, more glass there as well. Um, you mentioned those things earlier, but, um, you know, uh, you guys also have put more leg room and storage space, uh, in, in this new cab. Talk a little bit about kind of the engineering that went into that extra glass, those, uh, those increases in leg room and storage space. You know, I guess, I guess the question is really kind of what did you guys move around what did you guys take out you know to to get those those space increases um what did you guys have to change to the structure of the cab to to get that glass in there how did you make up for it uh on the structural side uh and and also uh beyond the how kind of give us an idea of what kind of a difference this is going to make to an operator uh these these changes to the cab so we talk about you know operator room within the cab you know you mentioned about moving the hvac system to get that room so on the Dash 5 machines, all the HVAC system, the components were located behind the seat of the operator. So now they've been relocated to the right side of the machine where it's not taken away from any of that uh, room in the cab. So now that we got that room behind the seat where the HVAC has been moved, we've added additional storage as well as we're able to move the seat back a little bit and increase the travel fore and aft on the seat. With that, then the steering column, the the angle or the rake on that was uh, decreased, you know, allowing that steering column to be further forward. You know, you still have the tilt and telescope on it as well. So, just just by moving that HVAC system off to the right hand side of the cab, where it it's not taking up room that was used to begin with, we're able to get all that uh, increased room within the cab. So then, as far as uh, you know the glass and so forth, anything we need to change. So it's the, we still have ROPS and FOPS structure on it. So just bringing the glass to the bottom, it really did not change anything structurally. So, you know, we brought that to the either side of the steering column, you know, the glass will come all the way down now for that visibility forward. And to, to the right, to right hand side, you know, we've got the glass as well uh, with this one hand uh, switch where you can open it. You need, don't have to reach over with two hands. And on the left-hand side of the visibility, the cab glass now comes all the way to the bottom of the door. So, and that's the, the door not being part of the structural part of the cab. So that doesn't really affect uh, any any certifications on that. So ju- just that in itself, just, you know, those, those few minor changes really, really increase the room in there. And, uh, and Bill, you mentioned the, the new cooling system, the kind of relocation of that, opening up all that room. But um, the cooling system is itself new. So have there been any kind of improvements there on the comfort side in terms of heating and cooling? Yes, the system moves over. Uh, as far as, you know, cab comfort, the vents, uh, relocation on the vents to provide a more uniform heating and cooling throughout the cab and the defrost vents and so forth. Uh, those, those have been moved around, uh, you know, again, it, it was incorporated into the styling as well on that front console. So uh, just, you know, overall uh, comfort within there as far as the, I guess, the, the cab air, air circulation on it, that, which which helped with that. And uh, er, earlier on, you mentioned, uh, a, you know, some of the, the kind of repositioning and kind of, you know, more ergonomic kind of positioning of, of the main controls. Um Take, you know, take us through those changes. You, you did mention kind of like the uh, kind of information button that'll kind of give you more of an insight into kind of what every uh, kind of button does. But but take us through the kind of uh, the positional changes and, and how those are, you know, how, how those are kind of imp- improving comfort or, you know, improving the day of the operator throughout the day. For instance, on the Dash 5 models, we had some switches located to the left hand side of the steering column. Those have all been moved to the right hand console. So as your operator sitting on the seat, with an arm's length, you know, there's no leaning in. Everything is all in a central location over the right hand, right hand side there. Uh, park brake switch, you know, hydraulic cutoffs, your push button start for the machines now. Uh, and then our multifunction keypad, uh, the, all one really easy location. And um, you, you also mentioned the, the steering column. Uh, this is kind of a, a combined question here, but um, you know, I, I guess like part A of this question is, um, you know, you mentioned a steering wheel. Do all of these models have steering wheel? Is that just kind of standard? Um, uh, but you guys have also introduced a, you know electric steering as as an option. There was mention of the joystick. So is that is that electric steering option? Is that strictly stick steer, or can you kind of can you know can you still kind of use the uh, the uh, the steering wheel in that uh, in that configuration? 
Um, what's kind of the status of how, you know, I guess steering options kind of break down on these new models? No matter the model, the steering wheel will be there all the time. Uh, there are certain models we've introduced that we can now order from the factory electric steering. So as you're sitting in the seat, left hand armrest will fold down and you've got a, a, a thumb operated joystick uh, to control the steering on that. And depending on the model as well, we can, we can adjust, well, all the models, we can adjust the steering sensitivity on it. Uh, a couple of the models, we have a little more control over it when we get to some of the electric over hydraulic controls. But so with that, with that armrest, we can control forward reverse. Uh, we, we can use the count button for our weighing system on it, uh, as well as steer the machine. So we'll still have that joystick steering with the armrest and a steering wheel in it. Is it only certain models that 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 electric steer is going to be available on, or is it is it every model in the lineup? Correct. We we've added some packages uh, to be able to factory order that now, so it'll be uh, from the on the DL three twenty all the way up through our DL five eighty, and those are going to be our US fifty and fifty one packages. Uh, with the exception there, I guess, uh, let me digress a little bit on the DL 580, the electric steering is standard. And then, um, and so, so basically the, the setup there, even if you do go with that electric steering and you've got that, that joystick control, you have the ability to either, you know, in the situations where you want the steering wheel, you can use that situations where you want the joystick, you can use that. But, uh, uh, you know, and I, I know this is kind of like becoming more and more of kind of like an increasing little kind of, uh, uh, friction point, I guess, in, in in the market, trying to figure out what customers want. I know that the majority of customers out there still want that steering wheel, um, but with kind of like the surge in popularity of the compact machines that we were talking about earlier, like compact track loaders. Uh, I mean, you can you know fully outfit you know uh, regular track loaders uh, now with stick steer, excavators with stick steer. You know, there's there's more and more machines that are kind of adopting that kind of uh, CTL style of steering. Um, are you guys seeing a little bit of surge in the um, kind of popularity of those stick steer controls on wheel loaders or, or is it still like, you know, 99% of, of guys that hop in these machines want a steering wheel? Uh, I, I would still say that 90% of the people still want a steering wheel. Uh, you do have those niche markets, uh, you know, some of the quarry mining applications where when that operator's, you know, doing repetitive functions, you know, 24 seven, you're just switching operators out. You know, for operator fatigue, they want that electric steering. Uh, one of the things that when you, when you start taking the steering wheel out of it, uh, you get into some of the uh, DOT regulations of being able to road the machines. So when you have a dedicated quarry machine uh, or dedicated machine, it's not going to see any roading time. You know, some of the guys, they, they, they want to take the steering wheel out, but we leave the option there to, you know, for the steering wheel and the electric joystick steering at the same time. So uh, I would still say that the majority of the market wants that steering wheel, but, but there are those guys out there that find that the uh, joystick steering or, uh, on the right hand armrest very convenient. And, um, you know, we've we've kind of talked about, um, you know, all of the kind of uh, most apparent features, but I kind of want to dig a little bit deeper into the machine. Now, there there are going to be, you know, seven. There's a, it's a 12 model lineup, but the first seven models are going to launch this year uh, in this new Dash 7 lineup. That's going to range from the 3.7 cubic yard DL uh, 280-7 all the way up to that that 8.4 cubic yard DL 580-7 that you that you just mentioned. But um, tell us a little bit about the engines on these loaders. Um, now, are, are these new engines as opposed to what we had in the previous generation machines? Um, and what you know improvements are there um, maybe in terms of, of torque and, and horsepower there uh, that we're finding with, with these new machines? Yeah, we, we, we've kept the best of what we had. So for instance, and I'm going to kind of cover the engine or the whole drivetrain as, as one and break them out a little bit. So engine, transmission, axles our, our drivetrain we've kept what it was functioning great for us uh very very proven you know we went from the dash see the before the dash three dash three dash fives you know we've all ha we've had the zf transmission axles and so forth so they've been proven for us very reliable uh and they've held up over time uh with that you know you asked about the engines so from the dl 280 through the DL380, so the 280, 320, 350, those are all Doosan engines. Then the 420, 480, and 580 machines, those are Scania engines. So those, those still remain the same. Those don't change. 
Uh, but for the DL280, we go from 172 to 189 horsepower on it. And then on the DL580, we go from 380 to 394 horsepower on that machine. So we've kind of improved and we kept, you know, some of the proven technology, if, if you want to say, uh, as well as, you know, the transmissions and engines are always being updated, but we, we've kept on that kept that proven technology on it. So the uh, you mentioned the kind of horsepower increases on really the smallest and the largest model. Are there are there horsepower increases across the entire lineup, or is it really model by model those increases? It's it's just those two machines, and that was more or less to fill a gap that, uh, for instance, you know, we go from a DL two fifty to a DL two eighty. Those were both one hundred seventy two horsepower. So now we got the DL two fifty that will remain at one hundred seventy two, and the two eighty jumps up to one hundred eighty nine. So it was to fill those gaps in horsepower and then the on the dl 550 uh that's at 380 or dash 5 580 was at 380 so then we we, we uh, put a gap in there so the 550 uh will remain at 380 and the 580 jumps up to 394 so just to fill in those horsepower gaps there as well as you know improve productivity and uh, what uh, what kind of opened up those those two models? You know, what kind of made possible those those in, those horsepower increases from the from the tech? Like, what what are you guys actually doing to kind of squeeze that that you know five to ten percent extra power out of there? So the the engines remain the same. You know, uh, fuel pressures change uh, as well as uh, compression ratios will change to to get those, as well as your fuel mapping. You know, some of the electronic stuff that goes into it. Gotcha. Okay. And, and, you know, staying on the engine side, one engine related improvement here um, is a feature that Doosan is calling situational awareness technology. Just kind of break down exactly how the system works. It's, it's an electronic system where you have uh, different controllers on the machine. You got your transmission controller, engine controller, vehicle controller, all talking through a CAN bus system. And depending on how the operator is operating the machine, let's say we're in a really light material. It's not being run really hard yet. The and the, it, it's the controllers are taking all this feedback in and they're looking at all this feedback and say, well, you know what? We're in really light condition and my operator's really getting on the throttle. So it's going to automatically adjust the engine output according to the parameters that are being fed into the machine through the different uh, sensors on the machine. Now, is that in the effort of, uh, of, of fuel savings? Absolutely. Fuel, fuel consumption the whole way. So it's kind of um, now, is that the only engine mode um, that, 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 so basically you can switch it into SAT if you're just like, I want to save some fuel, but I don't really want to have to fiddle with engine modes. Is, is that the only engine mode or are there others? So there's the SAT mode, which again is that situational awareness technology. Then we have what we call normal mode and then we have a power mode. So even within each of those modes, let's say I'm in the SAT mode and I find that I need some increased power. When I'm pushing on the, the throttle pedal, I can actually go over a detent and that will bump me up. If I'm in SAT mode, it would bump me up to the normal mode. If I'm in, in a normal mode and I come into a heavy load situation, I need that increased power. When I go over that detent on the throttle pedal, it'll bump me up into the next mode. So from normal to power. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, that's 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 something that I haven't really uh, kind of heard yet. So, you know, typically I think that the, the answer in most of these on most new models has really been the smart mode, but or the smart or auto or, or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, basically what you guys are saying yeah, that that D10 will actually kind of bump you up into that RPM range of, I guess the mode above it or the, you know, whatever the, what, what is the, um, that, what is the, uh, can, can you give us kind of some, some, some engine speed or some RPM specifics, uh, on kind of the situational awareness mode? What is that range that we're working with then? In the situational where in the SAT mode, the, your, your RPM range could, could vary vary it just depends on what the computer is set up based on operating well let's take the normal load let's say for instance at full throttle in the normal load we might not be operating at right around 1900 2000 rpm when we go over that you know the, the detent we go into the next higher mode it'll bump up approximately 100 rpms so to give you that increased torque and power but in in conjunction with all that we also have our Doosan smart guidance system which is another one of the electrical technologies that we put together. It, it kind of, you know, we talked about the SAT mode where it's, you know, taking in the different parameters and making adjustments. But working in the background, we have our smart guidance system that is going to actually give the operator a report card. 
So as he's operating that machine in the background, that machine's pulling in all the parameters, how hard he's working the machine. Uh, and at the end of the day, he can go into the monitor and take a look at basically a report card. Let's say he operated at 89% efficiency. It'll then give him suggestions on how to better or more efficiently operate the machine. So that's part of it. You know, he can go in and look at it, or he can select on that menu to give him pop-up menus that as he's operating, it'll say, hey, you know, you're getting on the throttle too hard based on the conditions, or you're braking real hard. It's not necessary to brake that hard. So, you know, that can lead into some longevity of the machines as well. So, you know, kind of putting those two together, they're just some really good technology in here. All right, guys. So, you know, we, we just talked about that that SAT mode, uh, but but and, and we also talked about smart guidance and another great new kind of uh, technology feature here that's really, you know, ho ho you know, hoping to, to help out the operator and his kind of his kind of daily tasks is called smart load. Um, this system basically gives the operator, you know, a real time view of how much weight is in the bucket at a given time. Give, give us a, you know, how does this uh, system work and, and what kind of uh, what kind of feedback have you guys been getting from operators who have been using this? system as far as the system working uh actually the, we place a couple uh, sensors inside the in the hydraulic system for the load arms so that, that takes all the calculations uh, as far as hydraulic pressures with, when you get a load in it and you know working through algorithms and you know your parameters on the loader the loader arms where the uh, arms are placed and so forth it'll actually come up with a weight for that so new for for this year we have a Doosan integrated scale system uh, so basically, you, you go into the pile, you pick up a load, and it's going to tell you how much is in the bucket. Okay, so that, that's one part of it. And then we actually can uh, set a target weight. So let's say a truck pulls into the, to the yard, we need to load it out with, let's say, 50 ton of material. And we go into the pile, we, we, can, uh, well, we can set a target weight let's, uh, into the computer there or the monitor, say 50 ton. So we get into the pile, we, let's say we go in and pick up 10 tons, we load it into the truck. It's now going to say, all right, you've loaded 10 tons into the truck. You got 40 ton more to load. So, and then for each load, you just hit the count button. It'll count up and it'll tell you when you get there. So you kind of take, start taking a look at that when you're putting trucks out over the road, you got DOT with scales, you know, the weight that those trucks are going out on the road with. So less chance of, you know, kind of either underloading them, overloading them. And the customer knows what he's getting there. And um, you, you know, the 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 we've kind of talked about capability a little bit before with uh, with some of the engine discussion. But the four of the largest models in this new kind of uh, the first seven models that you guys are putting out into the world here, uh, four of those models are getting a pretty sizable boost in bucket capacity uh, of about seven percent. So talk about these models that are getting that capacity boost. Um, and 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 what has also I know some structural changes um, have also uh, gone into place to make sure they're capable of handling that boost in capacity. Just give us a little bit of an idea of, of what's new on those models. So as a reference, you know, we go from the dash three mo or dash five model is a, let's say, take the DL 300 dash five. That becomes a DL 320 dash five. The 350 dash five becomes a 380 dash five and so forth. And we kind of go up the line, you know, 450 to 480. So with that, some of the, I guess the loader geometries have changed slightly. Uh, but the significant uh, change to get those increased capacities is we took the axles from the next higher model up and brought them down a model level. So we've got bigger, uh, higher capacity axles under those machines. And um, uh, I guess kind of rounding everything out here, I, I did, you know, we've talked about with the exterior design, uh, some of the the wide opening doors and everything like that. But I did want to give you guys a chance to, to tell us about maintenance on these machines, uh, what improvements have been made um, in the line of, of maintenance and making things easier on those day-to-day -day checks, uh, when work needs to be done to these machines. Kind of take us through uh, some of the maintenance improvements. From that side, uh, you know, we talk really briefly, I mentioned we've got our, our smart key or key fob type, you know, we got push button start in these machines. So, you know, typically when an operator comes out to the machine, it's, it's before sunup. So as they're walking out, they, they now have a key fob, they can push the button and a, a light will come on. One of the work lights will come on on the outside of the machine so they can come up, approach a machine, uh, and, you know, turn on their work lights. But aside from that, as far as, uh, maintenance standpoint and accessibility and everything. So even with the dash five models, everything was very accessible. So as you walk around the machine, all your access points or your, your access points and your maintenance items are at ground level. 
So they can walk around the machine and service everything from the ground level. Uh, as well as like on the Dash uh, the 580 machine, in, in addition to that, we've got a, a lube system that's standard. So they don't have to walk around and lube the system either. They can, it's all done automatically. So, you know, all your access points, we go to, you know, we talked about the styling, uh, the panels and so forth. You know, one, one lever opens up that engine panel in the back, it pops open, uh, easy access every, to everything from the right side or the left side or the rear machine with the uh, radiator grill popping up. Uh, for instance, the, the cooling fan, you, know, you pop up that rear radiator gr or you know, grill, the fan will open up. So if you get any debris that, built, that builds up in there, they can you know, clean it out there as well as it's a reversible fan to eject any debris that way as well. All right, guys. Well, um, you know, that's uh, that, that, that's pretty much the I feel like we've we've covered everything. But but I did want to give you guys an opportunity here at the end of the show to kind of um, is there is there anything else about these machines that we haven't covered or that you guys feel like um, customers out there need to know about these new Dash 7 loaders? But looking at it at face value and you walk up to the machine, the aesthetics, you know, it's won several awards over in Korea and so forth. I had the opportunity to go over, meet with the design team. They were very excited about it. They shared the awards they won, and I got to see, you know, everything they went through to get there. So, you know, the aesthetics on the machine, the styling, look great. But at the end of the day, you know, we talk about, you know, the performance of the machine. There's been a lot of increased uh, options and just, you know, horsepower and so forth, just to increase the performance on these machines. Uh, they're, they're a best in class machine. One thing I'd like to add is that, you know, these machines are going to be hitting dealer lots. Uh, some are there now and, and other models are arriving over the next uh, weeks to next month or two. Um, you know, we're excited for our operators and, and customers to get a chance to, to get in the machines and, and get a feel for the, the upgrades themselves, the added visibility, the added productivity of the machines. And uh, we'll be showcasing some of these models at upcoming trade shows that have shifted uh, timelines a little bit uh, this, uh, this year. So we're excited to, to get these in front of customers as we roll them off the line and uh, into the, the job sites where they can uh, prove their productivity. Hey, Bill, Aaron, thank you guys so much for, for hopping on today to really take us through uh, all of the major details and break down these new Dash 7 loaders for us. We, we really appreciate your time, guys. Thanks and uh, be well. Thanks. Thank you. You as well. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up this episode of The Dirt. Thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you again to Aaron and Bill for hopping on to take us through everything new on these new Dash 7 wheel loaders from Doosan. Hey, but we want to hear what you guys think, too. Drop us a comment below letting us know your opinion of these new machines and all the new features. We love hearing from you guys. And if you like this video and found the information in it useful in any kind of way, do us a favor and hit that like button below. It really helps our channel out. And if you want more coverage and more videos of construction equipment, head on over to our website at equipmentworld.com. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe to our daily newsletter. And if you haven't already, subscribe right here on YouTube as well. Hit that subscribe button below and be sure to hit the bell. Turn on notifications so you're getting up to the minute alerts whenever we drop a new video. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really appreciate your time and we'll see you in the next one.